Awesome, we're good to go. Okay, guys, uh, so it's happening. The uh, Ask Yourself versus Molyneux debate is going down. Um, I'm just going to pop into that Discord conversation in a second. I see we got uh, Atheism is Unstoppable here, uh, Fish Are Branded. I didn't realize you'd been calling yourself a fish lately. Uh, Chris Hines, that was a great job you did with... Um, with uh, Sargon, and if there's any super chats, I'm going to deal with them all after this stream is over. Uh, so with that said, I'm just going to go in and I will be quiet until the actual debate uh, starts up. So here we go. Okay. So uh, everybody, thanks for coming along. We've got Sifan Molyneux and Isaac from the Ask Yourself YouTube. Uh, Sifan Molyneux is a host of Free Domain Radio, the largest, most popular uh, philosophy show on the internet. Uh, Isaac, I'm sure many of you in our community know him. It's a pretty frequent guest here. And um, he basically does, uh, I guess, philosophical arguments uh, for veganism uh, and against carnism. So both Isaac, you can unmute whenever you're ready. Uh, yep, uh, I'm here. Thanks a lot for uh, having a chat. It's a very, very interesting topic. I've been absorbed in it for the last day or two. And um, I mean, I've made arguments regarding anim animal rights in the past, but it was great to go in and get more data. So thanks for the opportunity to have this conversation. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I was actually going to open up by saying the same thing to you. I appreciate you coming by the Discord, and I'm sure that uh, a ton of other people here do as well. Um, well, why don't you, uh, do you want to lay the, uh, the foundation for your side, and we'll take it from there? Sure, I'm happy to. Um, I also want to take just one moment to set the tone for the discussion, because I think the tone can have a productive or unproductive effect. So I just want to say where I'm coming from here. So... My goal is ultimately just to get to the truth. I just want to explore your position, explore mine, see if we can figure out where we're disagreeing, and then maybe we'll be able to resolve the disagreement. That would be ideal. Um, or maybe we won't. Maybe it'll come down to something that we need more data to really understand, or maybe it'll come down to a fundamental value difference. But my goal is really just to get to the truth. And in keeping with that, I just want to say that if at any point you feel that I'm mischaracterizing your position or I'm not addressing the core point that you had made, maybe I'm missing the point, or anything like that at all, just feel free to uh, chop right in and I don't mind getting cut off. And if you reset me and I'm still not getting the point, just feel free to do so again because I have no interest in uh, mischaracterizing you. Well, thanks. I appreciate that. Uh, my... What I like to bring to the table with regards to debates is always a bit of a sort of different flavor or an unusual approach. Uh, otherwise, it's kind of predictable. So to me, of course, since mostly when I walk around a mall, I see human beings as rotating pieces of chicken, like in a rotisserie. Uh, if, we, if I can get us all the way past animal rights onto straight up cannibalism, I would consider that a huge win. Uh, and then, of course, you can join me. I think it happens quite a bit in Germany. Uh, you can meet people on the Internet for that. So let's aim to get as close as we can to cannibalism. I'm just being facetious, of course. But, yeah, no, interrupt me away, away of course, as, as much as you see fit. And, you know, I don't like this sort of formal debate too much stuff. But just have a conversation like Agreed. we were sitting across a, in a coffee shop uh, with, a, with a primer. Totally agree. I love that. Um, okay, yeah, so I will start it off, and just one last thing. Some people here might have seen our last conversation. Um, that was a great conversation, but I think that for anyone who doesn't have that context, it might be confusing to start from where we left off, so I'm all for just starting fresh, if that works for you also. Yeah. Okay. Agreed. Cool. Well, with that said, let's just get right into it. You asked me to open up, so I'll go ahead. Um, okay, so Stefan, you affirm the non-aggression principle, which I think we could summarize as the moral principle that you ought not aggress against another unless that other is aggressing against you. Would you be okay with that characterization? Another human being, yes. Okay. Well, you should yeah. not initiate <laughs> yeah. force against other... Yeah, you should not initiate force against other human beings. Unless they're initiating force against you, presumably, right? Well, then it's not initiation, it's a response, right? You can't, oh, okay. you can't okay, start yeah, a sure. force. You, you can't start a fight, but it's okay to end one. Okay, yeah, I'm fine with that. So, the... What you do is you uh, extend the non-aggression principle to humans, but you don't extend it to animals. So I would like to ask you a question, and that question is going to be basically the same as last time. I'm wondering what it is that's true of animals, which, if true of humans, would cause you not to extend the non-aggression principle to them. 
I think we may have just blown past my tolerance for double negatives. So are you asking me <coughs> what characteristics animals would be able to achieve that would include them in the non-aggression principle? Um, I'll try to I'll try to state it as as clearly as possible. So I'm wondering what it is that's true of animals, which, if true of humans, would cause you to say they don't deserve the non-aggression principle. Right. Okay. So if I understand this correctly, uh, you're sort of saying, okay, well, let's say I say that if you have, uh, you know, like if, if you are, uh, if you don't have the capacity to understand a moral contract or a social contract, then you're not bound by the non-aggression principle. And I'm fully aware, of course, that there are some human beings who are unable to process the abstract non-aggression principle. And, you know, you wouldn't allow somebody with an IQ of 50 to sign a contract. Uh, for instance, uh, you wouldn't, somebody who had significant mental handicaps or challenges would not be accorded full human rights. And it is conceivable, of course, that you could have human beings either through some genetic disorder or through some brain injury that might end up with a functional level of intelligence similar to that of an ape or, or maybe even a less intelligent form of mammal and so on. And so the question is, is it simply a matter of intelligence? Now, of course, if it is a matter of intelligence and the ability to comprehend the non-aggression principle, then you could make a case, of course, that we should eat people who are mentally handicapped, which we know we kind of find repulsive and a, a terrible idea, which I think I can understand why. And so my sort of response to this is to say that we have a category called humanity. Now, in humanity, there is a bell curve of, you know, super intelligent, medium intelligent, low intelligence, and right out of the edge, I guess, on the left of the bell curve are human beings who don't have enough intelligence to function in society. Now, the reason why I would not include them in the category of animal is, is or non-human is A, they are human, uh, B, they can give birth to human beings, uh, and which you know, obviously apes and so can't, so they are potential intelligence, and C, there can be some kind of cure or some kind of way of remediating genetic or, or physical damage to the brain that might allow them to once more, you know, flowers for Algernon style, participate in human society, and so because of that, we kind of have a line that is okay humanity is in one category because humanity is by definition the rational animal and again there are irrational anti-rational non-rational human beings people in comas and so on uh, people asleep the people uh, distracted people who are socialists whatever right so they're people who who don't get sort of universality but they're still in the category of human being and that's where i would draw the line and of course you know given the shades of gray where you would say okay well if you have an iq of 50 or below you're not categorized as a human being well you are you're just a human being with an iq of 50 or below and nobody i think would feel very comfortable saying at least i hope not well you can eat people <laughs> with an iq of 49 but an iq of 50 would be totally immoral to do so like it just we just need to have that category because you really can't make moral rules by the wildly unusual exceptions. It's like trying to run biology by saying, well, you know, every now and then a dog is born with three legs and therefore we have no idea what a dog is. Well, a dog is a four-legged mammal and yeah, occasionally you're going to get a dog with two heads, three tongues, uh, two tails or no tail or whatever. And those are exceptions to the rule that does not invalidate the category lupus or whatever it is that, that uh, defines a dog. And so we sort of look at the more towards the center of the bell curve and say, well, human beings, by definition, and certainly on average, have the capacity to process universal and mutual moral rules. And because of that, they are able to participate in the umbrella protection of the non-aggression principle. Animals, uh, by definition, on an average, and I don't think there are any animals that could process the non-aggression principle, certainly not on average are not protected under the non-aggression principle. So that's a real, I'm sorry, I'm trying to keep it brief, but that's sort of the, the opening salvo, so to speak. Yeah, sure, no, you can always take your time. Um, okay, so for me to process what you said with respect to the question I asked, I'm going to have to be maybe a bit pedantic, a bit reductive, so hopefully that doesn't frustrate you, but I'm gonna to try to condense what you just said down to a trait, and for the purpose of, the, or set of traits, for the purpose of this conversation, trait just refers to that thing true of animals which if true of humans would justify not extending them the non-aggression principle so what it sounds like you're saying to me is that the trait is belonging to a species which on average can reciprocate social contracts would you say that that's accurate yeah i can understand through language and process philosophical abstractions of morality 
Okay, so the trait would be belonging to a species which on average can, uh, what was it, process philosophical abstractions with respect to morality? Yeah, a process through language, uh, philosophical abstractions uh, relative to morality in particular. Okay, all right. Now, have you heard the term species normality before? Speciesism? Species normality. Uh, no. So uh, that's the term that they use in the literature when they're talking about the kind of argument you're making. So it's an argument which uh, tries not to appeal to a trait that every individual member needs to have, but that the group as a whole, what you're calling the category, has, right? So if the trait is species normality on ability to conceptualize morality, then the reductio to that position would be that if on average humans could not reciprocate social contracts, so if 51% of us were mentally disabled to that degree, then it would become fine to murder people and make them into hamburgers. Would you accept that uh, conclusion to your position? Well, <clears throat> sorry, I'm just trying. So if, if you're saying that the majority of human beings in the world were functionally unable to process abstractions in the realm of morality, is that what you mean? Yeah, so say we have, I can use the same example as last time. Let's just say a genetic disease hits and 51% of the population is now uh, disabled to a significant degree. So they can't do that. So now, well, no, because because we have already within the category the possibility of a cure, right? So if there is some genetic disorder that hits humanity, 51 percent. Well, first of all, I don't think we'd have to worry about animal rights because people would I don't even know what society would look like. I know. I mean, I'm just I, I, within the context of the conversation. But no, because you would have a cure. And of course, if it was uh, something which was uh, attacked to the brain, you could still have reproduction with healthy children and so on. So. It would be a deviation which would be temporary from the norm of humanity, but they would, you'd still be protected under the non-aggression non principle because you had the potential for returning to a state of normalcy with regards to cognitive processes. Okay, so it sounds like there's actually maybe a bit of a two-trait stack going on. So it's species normality on ability to conceptualize morality in combination with uh, there being a cure. So now the reductio is going to be the same, except there isn't a cure. Well, no, it's the same argument as before, which is there are people who have extraordinarily low IQs, but they can still give birth to normal children, and they can potentially be cured in, in some sort of theoretical way. So all you've done is taken my exception, the very left tail of the bell curve, and you've moved it to the center, but the principle remains the same. Right. So well, wait, so with respect to them uh, be, there being a cure, in the hypothetical, there's not a cure. Um, but you added in also there the factor of uh, being able to produce further beings that can do this. So we could say now that it's like a three trait stack. There's like, uh, a, so there's species normality on ability to conceptualize morality. Um, then there is uh, there not being a cure and then there is being able to reproduce. So we're going to say that 51% of people uh, can't be cured, are not at that level of cognitive capacity, and are sterile. Does it, does it trouble you to stack these improbabilities as the foundation of your argument? Because to know that there is not a cure requires omniscience, which we can't possibly have in the world, right? I mean, so if you have to invoke some deity that is going to know for sure that there's no possible cure, you know, in this zombie apocalypse of 51% of people uh, with, with half a brain or something like that, I think at this point we're so far removed from reality that it's just not a practical place to start from because if you're gonna say, well, there's no cure, how, how, do you, how could you possibly know that even in the extraordinarily manufactured scenario that you're talking about how on earth would you know that the, the whole point is we don't know if there's a cure any more than we know for certain that someone in a coma is not going to wake up tomorrow right i mean so the fact is we don't know and because of that not knowing we have to extend the nap right so now i'm not trying to be rude at all but what you're doing there is altering the hypothetical right so it's not the case that there is a cure in the hypothetical no, no, but I'm not altering the hypothetical. I'm saying that you can't have that knowledge. In, even in the hypothetical, you can't say there's no possibility of a cure. Well, in the hypothetical, I don't understand why you wouldn't be able to say that in the hypothetical. That's, um, that's like how the hypothetical is constructed. So in, in well, no, this... because that, that is, no, because that is saying that the hypothetical 
travels through time past the decision point, right? Because if you, let's say, I mean, let's say, let's say this happens tomorrow, right? So then we would have decisions to make tomorrow. But if you're saying there's no cure, then you're saying the hypothetical that occurs tomorrow also extends infinitely into the future, and you know for sure that there's no cure. And that's not a possible scenario in reality, because there's always a possibility of a cure, right? Well, in the hypothetical, well, I, I mean, this is just going to be a fundamental kind of disagreement here, because the hypothetical is structured such that you have knowledge that there is no cure. So there's like three components to the hypothetical. So 51% of people are below the level of cognitive complexity where they're able to conceptualize uh, moral abstractions. <clears throat> Those same people are also sterile. And we have knowledge in the hypothetical that there's no cure. Now, if your response to that is simply to alter the hypothetical, then I wouldn't know how to engage further because that's how. The no, it, it would be to say that the hypothetical is impossible. Um, because to know that there is no cure is to know all possible. I mean, can you imagine the amount of, of genius and, and motivation that would be poured into trying to find a cure? And the cure could be, I mean, just to get ridiculous, let's say that half the brain was eaten away. The cure could be that you take a, um, some sort of genetic sample, uh, the, the people die because they can't function and there wouldn't be enough food production to support those people, and then you regrow them. I mean, you could, you could come up with where, where, okay, now they're human beings again because you've regrown them or you've cloned them or something like that, right? So if you're going to say that there's no possibility of a cure for a disease, then you're setting up a theoretical that could not exist in reality because there's always a possibility of some remediation for a, you know, e e even if you just come up with stuff like you, you could take the DNA replicated in a computer and come up with a walking robot that would be indistinguishable from blah, blah, blah. There's always some way to remediate the issue potentially, potentially. I'm not saying you'd actually. If, if it, so, if it, I mean, I don't, I don't mind, I don't mind if we go forward in this scenario, you know how they say in court, you know, I just, I just want it noted for the record that I consider, and I'm not, I'm not going to go forward and then circle back and undo all the going forwardness. I just want to I point appreciate out that, yeah. that if you're going to have, a, if you're going to have a theoretical that says, here's an ailment, it hits 51% of the people, and I know from here to eternity, there is no cure then you're taking something that happens in a particular time slice, a disease, and then you're extending the scenario at the same time as you're asking for the decision point in a particular time slice. You're also stretching that scenario out forward to infinity, which is two jumbles together of uh, uh, two scenarios, right? One of which occurs when there's the illness, and the other is I now um, have omniscience knowing that from now until the end of time, there's no possibility of a cure. Because let's say that the cure in a thousand years okay well maybe you can freeze some people like you know what i mean like you could walt disney some some people and then resurrect them and, and apply the cure or something right so i don't mind if we go forward i mean that's perfectly fine and i, I you know i'm not going to be one of these guys who if i lose the debate gonna say yeah well i didn't like that thing to begin with no that's perfectly uh, i will accept that i just wanted to note that it's um uh, it's not my preferred way to approach it, but I'm I'm happy to keep going. Well, I certainly appreciate. I have to say that um, you're taking the angle of let's go forward anyway, and I'm not going to try to say I'm not going to try to have this get out of jail free card basically at the end where I say ah, oh, but there's this this one point that his whole thing. Was yeah, yeah, I so, won't. No, that's I, that's that's kind of cheating because uh, to sure. me there's no point going forward if you're if you're going to circle back and and. I was well, like, undo uh, the thing that, that, that you started. But so, okay, let's go with this three-point scenario. Well, well, 51% well, wait, wait, sorry. Be before, are, wait, wait. Sorry, sorry I don't, I don't want to cut you off. But the thing is that even if you personally are not going to do that, which I believe you when you say you won't, people will do that. So I think that we should spend time to actually clear up if there's some kind of problem with the hypothetical. So if you think that there's like a logical problem, maybe like it entails a contradiction or a violation of like the law of identity or there's some kind of... Like well, no, no, it's a reality. It's just look, it's a reality, which is that if we wake up tomorrow with this horrible ailment, having consumed humanity, we would be in a position or we would be in a basic temporal, a time position tomorrow at noon. Right. It, it, it hits humanity, probably through some CNN virus. Right. So tomorrow at noon, it hits humanity and we have to make decisions. Now we have to make decisions and we cannot know that there's no cure. Right. In, in that time frame now if we then zoom out and we're omniscient and we know the beginning and end of the universe and there's no free will and right that's a different scenario but in the world that you and i would live in tomorrow if this hits we would in no way be certain that there could never be a cure does that make sense um well i think you're saying that you think that 
we wouldn't be able to uh, well yeah like i understand what you're saying you're trying to say that if we actually had a genetic disease strike we wouldn't have that kind of certainty so if it helps like i could just add to the hypothetical like say god just gives you the knowledge or something like we <laughs> okay all right right because because right. of the, course god the, god would then give you knowledge of a cure but anyway because well, god maybe, likes people to maybe, have free maybe, will. But let's maybe, say it's he, maybe he's god a demon and, yeah. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah yeah let's so, let's say it's it's some ancient bar, you know so, so, ancient Egyptian cat god that hates humanity for yeah. not giving it enough catnip or something. Okay. Sure. Yeah. Okay. We'll say we'll say it's that god. Um, because the whole thing here is, I want to get to the moral conclusion of the position, right? Because I think that there is a conclusion here that you actually probably wouldn't like. Um, well, I don't. So what you're doing is you're creating fifty-one percent of humanity is now functionally in the category of animal, right? Um, not in the category. Well, I mean, we're all animals, but like in the I'm, I'm get. So what I'm doing is I'm asking you. Let's no, sorry. Just, 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 just. So I'm, I hate to interrupt, but let's just sure. do this for clarity. We'll just say human and animal. I know that human beings are animals, but earlier you were talking about humans versus animals. So yeah, okay. Let's now just, just for the I sake will, of clarity, I'll, let's just do human and animal. So with this 51, percent sure, you're taking away the characteristics that I set up earlier, mm -hmm. which were the definition of humanity, and you're moving human beings functionally into the category of animal. 51, percent is that right? Um, not not quite. So I'm not necessarily saying that at that point they would become animals, right? Um, so what I've what I'm doing is I'm setting up a question where I'm saying, look, there's some set of things that's true of animals. There's some set of things that's true of humans. Um, now, what I'm asking is, of those things true of animals, which would have to be um, <clears throat> which would have to be true of the human in order for you to say they don't deserve the non-aggression principle? So the criteria you gave me was threefold, right? And you were just listing it off. I can list again for the people listening. It's um, the not belonging to a category of people who a category of beings who, on average, can reciprocate social contracts, who can uh, sorry, who can uh, do like abstract moral reasoning, uh, not being able to reproduce um, beings that would be able to do that, and then thirdly, um, what was the other? They're not being a cure. So what I've done is I've applied those three factors to humans. I'm not making a statement about whether they're still human or not. That was the thing I was slightly objecting to. Like, I think they'd still be humans. But I'm just giving your uh, sufficient criteria for not extending the NAP, then asking you if you'd really be comfortable not giving those people the NAP. OK, and let me, what, let sorry, me can I ask you one, this. One, one me, other thing. No, hang on. Sorry, uh, go ahead. Oh, okay. okay, well, we're both being too polite here. We're Canadian. Um, so the, the only other thing, there's also a weirdness here of your uh, species normality argument doesn't just apply to those disabled people. It's also going to apply to the 49% who are cognitively normal. That was just something else to add in. But um, yeah, sorry, go ahead. Sorry, I just, can you just repeat that last point? I didn't quite follow. Right, so um, you're giving a justification for not extending the NAP to, um, so I'm asking what's true of animals, which if true of humans would justify not giving them the NAP. Um, now, when I apply those three factors, it should be justified to not extend the NAP to humans as a category, not specifically just to those disabled humans. It's gonna apply to actually the whole category. So I was just throwing that in also, just for uh, for clarity's sake. Yeah, okay. So give me, uh, if, you, if you would, just give me some kind of understanding of this scenario in, actual life right so tomorrow this hits i hope you don't mind it, 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 i don't mean to diminish your argument That's but fine. if we can just can we call them zombies is that is that okay um well i personally like i it's funny and i don't i know you're not trying to be like bad with that but that gives a kind of framing where it makes it seem like obviously they don't have moral value in movies we're always killing zombies um and it makes them seem maybe like they're bloodthirsty so i'm actually not okay with that uh, i'd say no to that. no that's fine uh do you, should, well, what should we call them brainless or um, no they're not brainless uh we could call them mentally disabled well see you don't uh, like that phrasing right no no <laughs> no and the reason yeah the reason yeah. for that is that of course we can't put them in the category of mentally disabled because that may be an even greater supposed to cheat and so on for, than zombies because if we say mentally disabled we're putting them in a category which is currently protected by the nap which is they can reproduce and and they can there can be a cure right um, well, these people would still fall under the category of being mentally disabled. So I don't know, I mean, whether or not that merits the NAP on your view, that's the whole thing we'll get into. But I don't know what basis there would be for not saying that they're mentally disabled people. Like, it's literally just mentally disabled people who are sterile and who we know there's no, uh, there's no way to uh, bring up to our average level of intelligence. 
I'm just wondering. I mean, this this may be a dodge, and, and let me know if it is. But the thought just popped into my mind that uh, you could still use their cells to create human life through cloning, right? Right. So I, I certainly don't think you're trying to dodge at all. I definitely think you're being honest. But um, that is altering the hypothetical unintentionally, right? Because that's creating a situation where there is a cure. So now it's not the situation. No, 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 where no, 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 no. There's not a cure. No, hang on. There's not a cure for their ailment. But there is still a possibility of creating human beings from their DNA. Oh, so, so, okay, well, if you want to add into your, um, okay, wait, so I guess then instead of being able to directly reproduce, we could say, like, being able to, like, somehow make more humans out of them? Well, sure, I mean, you, you, you can make, because, because what you're kind of, make you, you can make you humans from human cells at, at, at some, to some degree or another, right? Right, so it sounds like what you're trying to do there is sort of, it just I don't I don't want to say alter because that makes it sound unfair, but you're trying to set up the situation such that sterility isn't going to mean that we can't make any more of them. But the reason I chose sterility was just to say we can't make any more of them. So I mean I could just alter sterility to just we're not able to make any more humans who are intelligent out of them. Like let's say we I mean if we want to get if we if we if we need like practical details to like paint a picture, like we can say when we try to do that, it just ends up creating more of these same kind of people. Oh, so the DNA of the the people that we're talking about, the 51%, their DNA has been so fundamentally altered that they're no longer in the category, even at a cellular or genetic level, of human being, right? Okay, well, here's a slight thing. I don't want to say that they're not in the category of human. Um, whether you say that, I mean, maybe we're off... Hey, come on. You're saying that their DNA has been fundamentally altered to the point where you can't make a human being out of them. Well, I don't know if it has to be their DNA, but it's just that they are severely, they're disabled, right? And then any attempt to create more humans out of them just produces more disabled humans. So um, I don't want to like quibble over whether they're humans or not, but I mean, we're talking about someone who would look like just a, a mentally disabled person you would see in real life, who most people would identify as being human. Well, but if you can't, if, if they have no human cells left or you can't create another human being out of the cells because then they would, I think, technically be a different species at that point, wouldn't they? Um, well, I don't want to actually give some like specific genetic answer. Like, let's just let's just say that they are still um, genetically. They're just like the disabled people we have. But there's some kind of uh, the disease. All it does is it makes it impossible for them to uh, reproduce or for you to reproduce more of them that aren't going to be disabled in the same kind of way. And um, so they would be they would be to all practical intents and purposes. And, and I'm not trying to again, I'm not trying to set up a difficulty here. I just want to make sure I sure. understand this conceptually. You're, you're setting things up so that this 51% would have functionally the same characteristics as, say, a chimpanzee, right? Because a chimpanzee can't create a human being. Uh, a chimpanzee can't have its brain, quote, fixed to, to become a human being. You can't take cells from a chimpanzee and create a human being through cloning or, or anything like that. So is it my understanding that you have made a category of humanity that is, in terms of classification, from a moral and biological classification, would be identical or, or functionally identical to that of a chimpanzee or, or some other ape? Uh, no, I think they would be more like humans. So I think that what's happening here is if you want me to grant that they're not human, because then it's just going to be kind of straightforward for you to say, oh, they don't get the NAP, right? So what I want to talk about is just um, sort of just like the character of like experience they have and sort of what they look like. So they look just like a disabled person who you'd see out on the street and their experience is identical to a disabled person you'd see on the street. And how, how disabled are we talking here, just out of curiosity? Um, disabled such that there's not... So disabled such that you wouldn't be able to say that a cow can do that kind of moral reasoning that you are placing value on to a greater degree than them. So they would have the functional mental capacities of a cow? Um, well, we don't have to say all of their mental capacities, actually, based on the trait stack that you gave, because what you, I mean, again, correct me if I'm wrong, but it sounds like what you cared about was um, them having the kind of cognition that would allow them to do abstract moral reasoning. So, 
Oh, no, 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 I understand. But they would have the moral reasoning capacities of a cow. Yeah, so there's no, there's no greater, it's at least nothing greater than that, yeah. Right, right. Okay, so I, I understand now. We basically have, and I don't mean to, to, to sound facetious, but the way <laughs> I'm characterizing good. it is that we have a cow's brain in a semi-human body insofar as it was human, but it's been genetically altered to the point where you can't make new human beings even out of cellular reproduction. So we have 51% of humanity has undergone unfair. a terrible, hang on, hang on, okay. has undergone a terrible transformation to the point where they don't share any of the original characteristics that I talked about that would protect them under the non-aggression principle. Am I correct in that? Uh, well, I think saying a cow's brain in a human body wasn't quite fair because there are humans who have human brains who aren't capable of reasoning like that. So again, like I would not no, no, say but that. No, 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 you, you can't, you can't bring any existing human examples in because in this instance, we have cellular transformation, right? Uh, assume at the genetic level. And we also have an Egyptian cat god who's told us there will never ever be any cure. Now, that's not, not at all the case with existing people who have uh, mental handicaps or deficiencies and so on. Uh, neither category is true. There could be a cure and you can certainly clone them. So we, we can't sort of bring, because we've gone into a, a little bit of magical theoretical land, which I'm, I'm perfectly happy to do. But if you want to take me to, you know, the Egyptian cat god has told us there'll never be a cure, then we can't circle back and compare this scenario to an existing scenario because we're in a different place completely. Um, well, the core thing that weirded me out was when you said cow brain and a human body, because in terms of in terms of the brain, right, there's people out there right now who are disabled such that they wouldn't be able to engage in moral reasoning to any greater degree than a cow. Yes, and as I said, but that's not, you can't take existing scenarios. Sorry, who's that typing? This sorry, that, sorry, I'm really not trying to be annoying. I'm just writing down your list so I can have oh, it no, in my head. Oh, no, that's fine. It'll be fine. done in a second. I, I, would suggest, uh, I would suggest pen and paper myself. Uh, that's what I do. You know what? Yeah, I can, I can also, writing. sorry, my bad. No, that's fine. No, see, see, but the problem is you can't take this scenario that we've constructed, which has two characteristics that would never exist in the world, which is they're no longer in a cellular way human beings. And secondly, we know for certain because of omniscience that they'll never be cured. So you can't say, well, there are human beings now who have the moral reasoning capacities of a cow. And it's like, well, no, because that's not an equivalence to your scenario because they're still human beings. You can clone them and we don't know whether they can be cured or not. Right. So if you're going to put those two additional standards in, you have to leave the existing world uh, behind. Uh, I don't think I really agree with that. So we can spend some time on this, I guess. So um, what I'm doing is I'm taking an example disabled person who exists right now who doesn't have the ability to engage in moral reasoning beyond uh, what a cow can do. And I'm saying 51% of people are like that, are sterile. And, no, no, um, listen, I'm sorry. This is sorry to interrupt. I understand all of that. I understand all of that. If we go into your world of a moral theoretical, which I'm happy to do, mm -hmm. if in your world we have omniscience about the possibility of a future mm -hmm. cure and they have cellular transformations to the point where you can't even make any new human being out of them, then that, that's fine. We can go there, but then you can't say that's like somebody who is mentally handicapped or mentally uh, challenged in the world now because it's not because we have these two additional standards no longer have cellular hu human characteristics and we know for sure that there's no cure we don't know well neither of those things would be true in the current world so if we're going to go into the theoretical world that's fine but you can't circle back and tie it to the current world because you have these two standards that would never occur in the current world okay so i think we are gonna have to spend time here because i think we're really disagreeing on this um because I think that it'll serve your argument if you can say something along the lines of they're nothing like humans, right? Um, and my whole argument is running off the notion that they are quite a lot like humans. Um, so the respects in which they're similar are they look identical and their subjective experience is identical. I mean, we're, the alterations that we're making are we're saying... Again, I don't I don't want to frustrate, but I'm just going to end up repeating it. So it's like we take a person who's sufficiently disabled that they can't engage in moral reasoning beyond what a cow can do. We say 51% of people are like that, and those 51% of people are sterile. Well, and they cellularly... Oh, cellular and, and, there, and there's they no cure. They don't... Well, it doesn't... And, I, well, I, no, at a cellular level, yeah. 
you can't make new human beings out of them or 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 freeze their cells to clone them in the future or, or anything like that right yeah well i don't i don't want to make some statement about what's what their cells are like or something but just the the situation is such that you can't create more humans out of them yeah you can't like somehow derive like a cognitively normal human out of these people okay so what i'm saying is that at least two of those standards do not apply to existing people who are mentally handicapped so if we're going to go into your theoretical world which i'm fine and happy to do mm -hmm. that's fine but then you can't say well then that's like somebody who's mentally handicapped in the present because it's not mentally handicapped in the present could be cured and they certainly are human and of course most of them are not sterile and so on. so if you're going to create a standard in your theoretical that's vastly different in, in, and in fact, impossible. Some of your standards would be impossible in the current world because there could be some kind of cure to brain disability that comes out tomorrow. Who knows, right? So if you're going to take scenarios that are not possible or functional or, or we don't have the knowledge of, of future cures, right, at the moment. So if you're going to take a scenario, then we can go into your world of scenario, but then you can't say that those people are like disabled people in the present because they're not. They have very different characteristics and we have omniscience and we have you can't make new human beings and they're sterile. And right. So you've taken a bunch of standards, some of which are possible, like they could be sterile. It could be whatever affects their brain, affects their reproductive organs, and some of which are not possible, which is omniscience regarding your cures. So I'm happy to go into theoretical land. But I think it's a bit of a cheat for you to then come back and get the sentimentality and optimism which we would have because the protection to the NAP which would exist for existing disabled people is because they are human, there could be a cure, they can give birth to other human beings, and you could take their cells and clone them, right? So if you're going to remove all those characteristics, that's fine, we can go there, but you're cutting off your route back to compare the people in this future scenario to people in the current scenario. I don't agree with that. Um, so you said I can't I can't make a comparison. I can't talk about likeness. You said they're not like them. Well, I mean, right. being being like them is just overlapping with respect to some characteristics, right? And they overlap with respect to their like just the state too. Their oh meant, god, no! Come on, their, come on, man. Well, well wait. Is, they, is it is it? Hang on. Is it possible okay. for you to say at the moment that there can never be a cure for mental disability? Uh, no, I wouldn't say that. Okay, fantastic. Right. So that's one of the foundational aspects. So in the world, as it stands, people who are mentally disabled, we can't say that there won't be some sort of cure, some sort of remediation, right? So if you're going to create a scenario wherein we know for sure, based upon some god or devil who told us that there'll never be a cure, then that separates us from, one of the, from, from, from the world that is, right? Um, you you our, can't say, our... well, the, the people where we know for sure there's no cure are like the people where there could be a cure. Well, right? what, they're they're well, not what, the same category. What does it mean to say something is like something else, though? To me, that means that there is some overlap in terms of propositions true of those things. So, like, there but there's still... no overlap. There's no overlap in there could be a cure, and we know for sure there is no cure. Right, there's no but, overlap. Right, but likeness is just based on there being some overlap with respect to some of the propositions true of the beings. It doesn't have to be that all propositions overlap. That's sameness. I'm not talking about sameness. No, no, I understand that, but that's like saying that we need to extend the non-aggression principle to statues because they have arms and legs just like human beings. It's like, yeah, but that's not no, the essential characteristic is no, having arms and legs because no, a guy without arms and legs is still covered by the non-aggression principle. No, not quite. It would be in this In this instance, it would just be saying that the statue is like the human. And I would say that the statue is like the human. Wouldn't you say that the statue is like the human? No, no you... not when it comes. No, no, not when it comes to the question of being covered by the non-aggression principle. Right, but right now I'm just talking about the concept of likeness. So let's let's just spend a moment on likeness and sameness. So I take likeness to mean that if we have two things, there's a bunch of propositions about both of those things, that there is some overlap in terms of the propositions true of the things. I take sameness to be that all of the propositions are the same. Well, but if one of the key pro if one of the key propositions is the definition what? of the category, right? So I can't say a mammal is. If I say okay, the definition of an, of a mammal is is warm blooded as opposed to a reptile that's cold blooded, right? Then I can't say well a mammal is just like a reptile based upon the temperature of its blood, because that's one of the distinguishing characteristics between, say, reptile and mammal, right? And in the same way, if I say the possibility of a cure is one reason why people who have cognitive deficiencies are covered by the NAP, and then you create a scenario where that is taken away, okay, well, now we have a different category. Well, 
I just want to talk about likeness and sameness because you were telling me that I can't say that they are like the disabled people who are alive right now because there is some difference. And I just don't take it to be the case that because there's a difference in the propositions true of two things that they aren't um, like each other. In fact, saying two things are like each other as opposed to identical to each other implies that there are some propositions that aren't the same between them. So I, I certainly think that you can say a statue is like a human uh, the disabled people in the uh, analogy are like the disabled people in real life. I would not say that they are the same. I'm happy to grant that. No, but they're not. I mean, when it comes to the moral category, like say a statue falls over and crushes someone, we don't take the statue's remains to court and try it and throw it in prison and consider it morally evil for crushing someone. But if someone voluntarily jumps from a high place onto someone while dressed in chainmail armor and kills them, then we take that person and we put them in court and we, we, we consider them morally right. So when, when it comes to the ethics, there's no overlap between a statue and a human beings. And we're talking about the ethics of the non-aggression principle. And if you're going to remove the categories that define the ethics of the non-aggression principle, then you're going to have something else, but then you can't go back and say this is like that. Um, right. So what I'm getting stuck on is that we are just disagreeing about what likeness means. So to take a step away from talking about morality, about the non-aggression principle, let's just talk for a second about what likeness is. What do you take likeness to mean? Because maybe we just have a disagreement here. Well, likeness would be varying degrees within a particular category, right? So somebody who has an IQ of 115 is a standard deviation above somebody who has an IQ of 100. So the person who has an IQ of 115 is more intelligent, so to speak, or at least has a higher IQ, we could say. And so, yeah, they're like each other. There's an overlap of intelligence, but they're not the same thing. They're along the same continuum, but they're not at the same spot. Now, for me, I think likeness is one of these kind of fuzzy terms in philosophy where you can say almost anything is like something else. I mean, I think you can say that a basketball is like the sun in that they're both spheres, despite all of the aspects in which, in which they're disanalogous to each other, because they share that proposition about being spherical. Mm-hmm. Right. So, but then why wouldn't why wouldn't why did you push back when you said that the human being has the moral capacity of a cow, and I said, okay, well, with regards to the defining characteristic of humanity being covered by the NAP, which is the capacity to process abstract arguments regarding morality, why did you push back when I said it's like having a cow's brain, right? Because, um, well, why why is your analogy fine, but my likeness is not fine? That's a little confusing to me. I'm happy to hear the distinction, but it's a little confusing. Um. If I remember, I'd have to play it back, but I don't think you said it's like they have a cow's brain. I think you said they do. I might have heard wrong, though. Okay, but functionally, they have the moral reasoning capacity of a cow. So with regards to, like, they could have, um, oh, they could be idiot savants, right? That they have the moral reasoning of a cow, but they can paint wonderful pictures. <laughs> but, you know, that doesn't have any particular relevance to sure. the ethics of the non-aggression principle. So if you say that they have the moral reasoning of a cow, and I say, well, with regards to the non-aggression principle, they have a cow's brain, you didn't like that, right? But that's very much in line with what you're saying. Um, well, I'd, I'd have to remember the exact phrasing you used with, um, with the cow and the human. So I honestly, I don't remember the exact phrasing there. But well, you could well, certainly how about, say how there's... About we say, what, how about we say they have a cow's ability with regards to morality? Oh yeah, I'm I'm totally fine with that. The part that I okay. objected well, let, to. Let's let's keep going. If you if you give me, well, if you sorry, give one, me, Stephane, uh, this sounds one... like horse trading or something. Okay. <laughs> it's really cow trading. But if you give me, they have the functionality of a cow's brain with regards to morality. Then I'll give you uh, going back and and talking about people as if they are in the category or similar to the category of existing people who are mentally handicapped. Um. Right. Okay. Well, I think I think we can clear this up. So I'm just gonna have to slow down and think for a second. So what I had trouble with was when you said that they're not like the disabled people who are alive right now. So right. The, sen the sense in which they're alike is like subjectively, their, their personal experience could be identical to some disabled person who's out there right now. And their actual yeah. physical uh, appearance could be identical. Right. Okay, well, as, lo as long as we're on the same page with that, and then you want to talk about the cow's brain. So I can't remember the exact phrasing, and it's possible I have... No, no, we've solved that one. We've solved it, because um, we've agreed 
that we can refer to these people as having the moral abilities of a cow's brain or the moral capacities of a cow's brain. Right. I do. I do agree with that. And if, okay. if somehow I didn't agree with that the first time, I might have I might have possibly heard wrong or maybe you spoke differently. I don't know. But no, that's it fine. It doesn't matter. Okay. You know, there's no need to circle back if, if we've already buried the body. OK, <laughs> awesome. So so let's. Uh, so then if I give you that hypothetical, I say we've got 51 percent of the population who are. Uh, unable to engage in abstract reasoning beyond uh, what a cow can do. Um, they can't, you can't make more humans out of them. Uh, and there's no cure. Um, would you say in this instance that now it's fine to just not give humans the non-aggression principle? Well, I mean, from a logical, I mean, I understand the emotionality of the argument. I'm going to address that with regards to the audience because, you know, in a sense, there is the feeling, which is not an argument, I understand. There's the feeling of like, oh, no, I'm backed into a corner where I have to say we can eat retarded people, right? We can eat people who are mentally handicapped, right? So I'm, I'm fully aware of that. But to be fair to the rationality of the argument, if I set up particular standards by which people are covered or, or um, uh, creatures are covered by the non-aggression principle, if each one of those standards are removed, then the protection of the non-aggression principle is removed. Right. So, yes, I mean, they are no longer subject to the protection of the non-aggression principle if they do not possess any of the characteristics that define protection of the non-aggression principle. I'm willing to say that, of course, while fully recognizing that this scenario could never exist in reality because we would never have a God who tells us for sure that there could be no cure and we would never have cells that have been so altered that you could never create another human being out of them. So just to be clear, I just want to make sure that we're getting to the core here, because I really did not expect you to take this kind of position. You're actually saying that but it's, it's, it's a logical position. If I say there's these four things, right, that, that hold up the ceiling and you take all those four things away, then the ceiling falls down. Right. I mean, that's 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 what you that's that's the do. That's the business of logic. Um, yeah, it, it is. But sometimes people will say something like, oh, I like set up the ceiling with some wrong pillars. Maybe I should like. Alter no, no, my... <laughs> I'm not going to cheat. I, I gave no, you that, the, that I would not be cheating. That would just be that would just no, be adjusting. It would be cheating but... because if I gave you the definition at the beginning, now I can say I could say I find this result unacceptable. And therefore, I'm going to go back and redefine things. And, um, you know, but I'm perfectly comfortable in an impossible scenario these uh, creatures would not be subject to the protection of the non-aggression principle. Right. Well, keep in mind, it's not just them, right? Because we're talking about humans as a category. So if 51%, like you could be one of the humans who's in here, but 51% of people are like this, uh, can't reproduce, there's no cure. I mean, this is going to justify murdering you in this situation also. Well, okay. So in the, in the alternative universe that couldn't exist, um, yeah, that's certainly possible. Okay, so just to uh, and also when when you say couldn't exist i don't think you can actually spell out a logical um problem with the hypothetical i don't think there's anything illogical well, no we already went through this if you've got a god coming in giving you omniscient knowledge about the potential for a future cure and if you have alteration of cellular dynamics to the point where you can't make any other human being we're not in the realm of reality anymore because if, you, if your argument requires omniscience, I'm certainly happy to play around with it in a theoretical way. But nobody knows for sure whether there's a cure. We already established that, right? If this happens tomorrow at noon, we would not know whether a cure would be possible or not. And so, yes, in an impossible scenario, I fully grant you that these people would never, uh, would not be covered by the non-aggression principle. Um, well, I could focus more on the possible impossible thing, but let's just, I guess, get to the core of it. So, I mean, you would really tell me that in this world it would be fine to just murder you despite the fact that you're subjectively just like you are right here you'd be the same stefan you'd want to talk about philosophy you'd want to you know wait what well i'm sorry did i miss something wouldn't i be in the category of having the reasoning capacities of a cow what, 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 I well, mean, unless you've got some moo cow oh, no, oh, philosophy no, no, no. network going on there, I don't understand where, where I'm in the category of talking philosophy while having the acuity of a bovine. Oh, okay. Well, then there might be a slight confusion here because what you gave okay, at the start... Okay, good. Please tell... No, no, oh, no. You're it's, saying it's... all human beings... No, no, I'm not. No, I'm not. No, I'm not. Because remember, when I asked, what's, uh, I asked what's true of animals, which, if true of humans, would justify... Um, 
would uh, justify not extending the NAP to them. You're talking about belonging to a species which on average can um, in engage in that abstract moral reasoning. Now, even if you were in the 49% who can, you would still have that property be true of you. You would belong oh, no, to- Oh, no, no, I wouldn't. No, no, I wouldn't. You would belong to a species No, who... no, 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 not, I'm not, I'll grant you the other one. I'm not giving you this one at all. No, I mean, it doesn't make any sense. Well, the fundamental reason being that you can't say that people who are now permanently and irrevocably morally the same as a cow are exactly the same species as people who have normative human functioning like they're just not the same they're not they're not in the same category in it um well wait a second so you're trying to so you're trying to stop this from applying to you by saying that no in no, that no no no, no. i didn't look like, i didn't say i get the magical exclusion what i'm saying is that if you have as protection the non-aggression principle the capacity to process moral arguments and I, I mean, I, just, I do understand your argument. Don't get me wrong. I fully say like, so you're saying, OK, well, I, I get around the exceptions by saying, well, this is the norm. Right. And you're saying, OK, if 51 percent is the norm. Mm -hmm. but if well, first of all, it's not a long lasting problem because they can't reproduce. Right. So this is not a long lasting problem. Right. Because people are I mean, they're not going to reproduce. They're not going to be able to function. They're not going to be able to handle uh, food. Uh, growing or, or getting a hold of food and so on, right? So, I mean, these creatures that you're coming up with who have the moral acuity and, and in general mental capacities of a cow are not going to last very long. I mean, it's a, it's a nasty scenario, but I understand why you're doing it, right? So this is a very brief hiccup. They, they may last, what, a week uh, uh, tops because, I mean, where are they going to find water? Where are they going to find food and, and shelter and, and so on, right? And in this kind of scenario as well, predation from from wolves and tigers and the, the zoos would would let out and you know, there'd be diseases and you, you know exposure and and whatever right and, and so the the creatures that you're talking about here would last i don't know maybe a week maybe maybe two right so you just kind of uh, hole up and 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 wait for this horrible zombie plague to to blow over and therefore i don't think this would be any any particular problem but i don't think you can hive off 51% of humanity, put them in the category of cow, and then say, well, now this cow category spreads to all of the human beings who have still their full cognitive functioning. Well, I'm not putting them in the category of cow. I thought that we agreed no, that... No, morally, morally. No, hang on. Right. See, we're talking yeah. about morals, right? And we, I wrote it down here. They have the moral abilities of a cow. Mm -hmm. So with regards to ethics, they would be indistinguishable from a cow just in terms of their capacity to process moral reasoning. So this would be a wrecked half of the species that would last a couple of days before dying and would have the moral capacities of a cow and then to say, well, they're disabling for the couple of days means that their disabling suddenly becomes the norm for humanity. But they're not the norm for humanity because you've had a terrible event that has taken them out of the norm of humanity. And if there's, I mean, just to think about a biologist, right? If a biologist sees a plague racing through a particular species, right? Let's say that, you know, when they have tons of, of rabbits in, in Australia, right? They got rid of the dingoes and the rabbits spread like crazy. If there was some disease spreading through that caused the rabbits to die in a day or two, the biologists wouldn't go in there and say, well, I've now redefined the species of rabbit even if 51% of the rabbits are dying from this disease, the, the biologists wouldn't go in there and say, the definition of a rabbit is now that it's dying of this disease, right? That, that, that would be, they would be like, well, there's healthy rabbits and then these horrible rabbits is terrible what there's happening. They're dying from this disease. But you don't suddenly get to recategorize rabbits as those bunnies that are dying of this disease, right? That, that wouldn't occur. Um, yeah, so what you want to do is basically separate those beings out so you can't say that they're part of humanity so that way i'm not going to be able to say to you well look you're in the 49 percent; they're in the 51 this justification is going to apply to you in this world it's going to be fine to murder you in this world you want to say no they're just a different species at that point well no i mean or you could say they're either a different species or you could say that they are still a deviation from the norm of humanity because they've been struck by something that moves them out of the general category of humanity. So would you, I mean, let me ask you this. Would you say if you were out in, in the, 
uh, in the outback in Australia, and you saw a bunch of rabbits, 51% of them were dying of some horrible disease, would you say that the definition of a rabbit is now that which is dying of disease? No, I don't think I would. So if you want, I could well, give... But then your argument collapses, right? Um, I don't think so. I think that... You know, if... it does, because you're now saying that the, the rabbits have been struck by a disease, and the definition of a rabbit is still a healthy rabbit. It's just that there have been a lot of them that have been struck with this disease. And well, in the same way, the definition of a human being is still with full cognitive functioning. It's just that a lot of human beings happen to have been struck by this disease. Right. So basically, what I'm doing here is there's two degrees of like how bad the reductio could be on your position. So the first degree is just where it's going to be, you know, okay to like murder the mentally disabled people, right? The second is where it's even going to apply to people like you. Now, if we do something like you, you set up your definition such that those people aren't going to be in the species or, or we do something uh, like that, right? Wait, no, then... no, 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 no. I don't know where you're going, but we just agreed on something here. Right. So I don't know where you're going at this point, because um, this is kind of important. Right. If you're saying that hmm. the rabbits who are ill are a deviation from the natural definition of rabbitdom, right, which you agreed that they are, because even if 51 percent of them are dying of some horrible disease, you don't have you don't redefine the whole species to be that which is dying of the disease. Right. So the disease, even if it strikes 99 percent of the rabbits. Right. The disease does not define the essence of being a rabbit in the same way that when the bubonic plague hit Europe in the 13th, 14th, 15th centuries, and up to 60% of people died in a particular location, you didn't say, well, now the definition of a human being is a mammal that's dying of bubonic plague, right? You'd say, wow, that's a lot mm -hmm. of people who are dying of that plague, but the essence of a human being is not to have bubonic plague. Yes, yeah, it's, it's I, a, an ailment that is striking a healthy human being. And in the same way, 51% of people have this brain rotting disease that you magically know can't be cured and it alters their cellular structure. That does not change the definition of a human being to include that category because that is still a deviation from the category of human being, which is the rational animal. And we've agreed, we've agreed on that with regards to rabbits and there would be no reason to not agree with it with regards to humanity. Um, okay, so I'm going to kind of i'm still going to try to say the same type of thing that i said last time um so there's like two degrees of like how intense the reductio could be on your position so just just hear me out on this so if you don't do the move where we say like those beings aren't going to be part of the species whatever then this is actually going to apply to you in that hypothetical world if we find some way to split it off like that so we say those beings are a different species. So the species that is human is still majoritively, majority cognitively functional. Then the reductio is going to be still strong, but not quite as strong, which is it would just justify murdering the disabled people. So what I wanted to do was just toy around with how we're defining species there for a moment to see if you have a good way to kind of get out of that. So I could alter. Wait, I, I feel like we've just lost the whole rabbit thing here. Well, well, wait, I'm, that's what I'm addressing. So for example, I could alter that. I could say, well, it's not a disease. Let's say that it's just gradual genetic change that takes us there. But I want to zoom out to the big picture before you reply to that, right? So the big picture is just that based on how your trait stack works, there could be two kind of intensities to the reductio, right? So if you find some way to separate those beings out, even after I modify the hypothetical or whatever, then we're not going to have the extremely crazy conclusion where it's like, okay, to murder you in the in that world also because you're part of that species, even though you're not disabled like this, right? Um, and then if it is the case that we get out of those kind of situations, then there's a slightly weaker, but I think still very potent reductio, which is just going to be about killing those disabled people. No, no, but none of this, none of this matters. Okay, I'm sorry to be so blunt, but none of this matters because the moment that you say that the illness is a deviation from the de definition of humanity, then there is no killing the mentally acute 49%. Um, because well, it, it, because it, right. we said if 99% of rabbits get sick, that doesn't change the definition of rabbit to sick. And if 51% <clears> of people have the moral reasoning of a cow, that doesn't change the definition of humanity to that biped which has the moral reasoning of a cow. Right? It doesn't, it doesn't change the definition. So the definition of humanity 
covers the 49%, not the 51%. You don't change the right. definition yeah. when there's a deviation from the norm. No, I, I understand that that's the move you're making. I'm just trying to zoom no, out. No, 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 that's not a move. Come on, man. Don't, no, don't, but, don't insult oh, oh, me that way. Wait, 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 but it wasn't, it, just to be clear, I'm, we can talk about everything in a second, but I don't want there to be a perception of an insult. That was not an insult, right? I make well, it's moves It's not a move. You, you agreed with it. Oh, so all, all, I mean by, all I mean by move is like the same way as a move in chess. It's just a move in debate. It's not like, oh, you're moving, you're dodging. It's No, I'm just saying like, no, I, don't, I, I don't mean I it like that. I understand what yeah. the word move means, but it's not a move if you agree with me. No, no, I think, like, I think we any... We have established a reality. We have established something which we both agree on. I think you're which misunderstanding. Is a, deviation yeah. from the, 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 a deviation from the norm of a species, no matter how much of that species is consumed by that deviation, a deviation from the norm of a species does not change the definition of that species. So if 51% of humanity ends up with the moral reasoning of a cow, it does not change the definition of humanity. And therefore, you can't say, well, the definition of humanity is now all human beings can be uh, 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 no human beings are covered by the non-aggression principle because there are some in this theoretical scenario that aren't. Because we've already agreed, you don't, cha you don't change the definition of a biological entity based upon deviations from its normal state. And it doesn't matter if n you could say 99% of humanity is struck with this mad cow disease, so to speak. Mm -hmm. It doesn't matter if 99% of it is struck. The 1% is still the definition of humanity and the other 99% for the couple of days that they live. Uh, are a terrible and tragic deviation from that standard. Um, okay, so the one thing that I just don't like is I don't like when there's a perception of an insult. So I mean, if you take it like that, then okay. But like I, when I talk right now, like I'm going to be making a move. All I mean by move is just like the step you take in a debate. It's not. It's not an insult. Um, okay, so with respect to the content of what you just said, so all I'm doing is I'm zooming out one step, and I'm just saying that based on the kind of stack you use. There's two possible reductios here. So you're talking about the the like cognitively uh, capable 49%, right? So if if we get a reductio where uh, for whatever reason we're still counting the 51% as humans, and we could talk about how we might get that reductio. Maybe we don't talk about a genetic disease. We talk about gradual like natural genetic drift or something. I don't know. If we have a situation where those people still count in the category then there will be the really strong reductio where it's going to justify killing people in the 49. But if there's a way to make the category separation, then we're going to get just the reductio about killing the disabled people. Now, I want to address the separation you're trying to make. And I'll see if well, I first can... First of all, you, you, can't, you can't have both, right? You can't say that there's a gradual genetic drift and that they're sterile. You, you can't have both. Like, I mean, I wish I could give you both, but it's not logically possible because the only way there could be a gradual genetic drift is that they're not sterile. And if they're not sterile, then they're not part of the 49 or 51 percent. They're just part of humanity. They're covered by the non-aggression principle. Right. So y you can't have both. Um, OK, well, it was, so you're saying the two you things. You got to like... agree with me on that, right, that you can't have genetic drift without reproduction. OK, can no, we, you, can, least, you, you certainly can can't we at least yeah. agree on that. Yeah, I certainly agree with that. OK, um, so let's yeah. not go with genetic drift. We've got this. It's either sudden or they're covered by the NAP. Um, okay, so I guess that for me right now, what I'm doing in my head is making a decision of, do I want to go down the road of trying to like pigeonhole you into putting those people in the category human by trying to go to these situations like, oh, it's gradual drift and then suddenly they become unable to reproduce, or do I want to just go for the less intense reductio? So I think I'll just start with the less intense reductio so we don't end up with these kind of, so we don't end up in this territory right now. Then maybe we can go there after. So, Let's just grant that those people don't count as human. So we're not going to be talking about killing the 49%. No, no, you... no, no. Hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on. <laughs> I thought that so was... So don't uh... count as humans is kind of an inflammatory way to put it. And I'm not accusing oh, you I, of manipulation yeah, or anything. It's to, just... Yeah. No, no, no. Because let's just say they're not covered by the non-aggression principle. Sure, sure. I'll say right? it like I that. Mean, yeah. Because then it sounds like... Because if you say they're not counted as humans, okay, then we have to go with a different species and they'd be closer to apes or cows than human beings and right, blah, blah, blah. So we'll just say they're not covered by the NAP. Um, okay, yeah, sure. I'll, I'll just say that. That's fine. Um, okay. okay, so let's just, uh, let's just go with the situation where the 49 are still covered by the NAP. So the 51%, 
who are cognitively identical to mentally disabled people who are currently alive, right? Uh, and they look identical also. Looking at them, you wouldn't be able to tell them apart from a mentally disabled person who's currently alive. You would say that, I mean, I, I'm not trying to be inflammatory here either, but you would say that it's actually just fine to like slaughter those people? Well, okay, so let's talk about the consequences. First of all, they're going to be dead in a couple of days anyway. Well, wait, let's see that. That's no, no, no. no. If, you, if you're going to talk about like actions within this universe, then we have to look at the consequences of but that's... this universe. And I just want everyone to remember okay. that we have an impossible category here. So this is all very theoretical, right? I mean, because we have the two impossible categories. I just want to remind people that they no longer are cellularly human beings and that we know for sure that there's no cure, right? So if we're going to talk about how morality or reality plays it out, in this scenario, then let's talk about it. So we, we're going to have a couple of days where these creatures can live, right? These, whatever the the, the cow people, right? I don't. We're I don't like that. We're going to have a couple move, of days. But okay. No, but I mean, with regards to the non-aggression principle, they we have the cognitive abilities of a cow, right? Well, that's, that's what we that's what we that's what we talked about, right? Right. But the thing is, when you add in that they're just going to be alive for a couple of days, it allows you to paint it more like you're like mercying them or something. So let's no, just no, no, say no, 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 hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on. Don't don't let me make my case. You know, you, you can respond to it, but don't make my case for me. Okay. And I'll, I'll try not to make your case for you as well. Okay. Right. So we've got a couple of days where these uh, uh, creatures can can live and human beings. Of course, they were former human beings. Right. Which is. A cow was never a former human being. I mean, unless you're really into reincarnation, which is perhaps just a topic for another time, right? So these creatures were struck with a horrible illness or dysfunction. They were formerly human beings. And people have a very strong aversion to Most people have a very strong aversion to killing other human beings. And they also, of course, have a... a, a almost pathological which i think is great a pathological avoidance of cannibalism right i mean outside of again german chat rooms and billy eilish songs right i mean we we have a we don't like to eat other human beings and we don't like to kill other human beings we know this because like in the second world war it was only a tiny minority of soldiers who actually pointed their guns and, and shot at other people and which is why they had to dehumanize the soldiers for the process of, of vietnam and so on so we have a strong aversion to killing we have a strong even stronger aversion to to cannibalism i mean some people have chosen to starve to death when human meat is available because they just find it so uh, repulsive. So the idea that there would be any kind of mass slaughter is, is, I mean, virtually incomprehensible. And of course, in the scenario that you point out, uh, will they find water? I mean, there would be no taps. There would be um, no, no drinking fountains. Uh, society would have simply ceased to function because 51% of the people have, have lost most of their mind. And so they're going to be dead in a couple of days. And uh, as far as mercy killings go, I mean, you know, again, in this horrible scenario, it's a tough call. It's a tough call. You know, if there's someone you loved, you knew they couldn't be cured. And if they slow, ghastly, horrible death that they couldn't comprehend, my question is, I would never say, yeah, go ahead and shoot people. But I will be perfectly frank with you. If, and again, I want to remind everyone, this is an impossible theoretical scenario, but in this science fiction novel, if I was reading this science fiction novel, and if someone, someone's husband, like some woman's husband, got struck by this ailment and she couldn't feed him, uh, she couldn't uh, give him any water or whatever, and f just for whatever reason, if she ended up killing him because he was going to die in a day or two anyway, but a much more painful and horrible way, I mean, I wouldn't say good job. I wouldn't say morally great. But I would say I can kind of understand where you're coming from. Again, in this nightmare science fiction scenario, I would have a very tough time saying, well, let's let's take all the people who, who killed in, in a humane manner those who were going to die horrible death. I don't know. Like, it's, it's really tough to say in that kind of scenario, let's have uh, a, a trials of two billion people and build lots of prisons. That would be tough. That would be a tough case to make. Yeah, well, I think that what's being done there isn't totally fair. I don't think you're trying to be like like dodgy or anything, but what you're doing there is you're making the situation come across like so this like horrible nightmare that you're saving those people from. So let's just say for whatever reason they're just not gonna die in two weeks. 
So, oh, come on. I mean, I mean, this now you're just changing everything, right? Yeah, okay, let's just change the rules till I Well, win. can I just say one thing? Come on. I mean, can, if you're going to have a scenario where 51% of the people have the reasoning capacities of cows, but hmm. they're fine, I mean, come on. Yeah, well, come I mean, on. you could, right. So I think that I am going to keep altering it as you throw things up against the hypothetical, right? So what I'm doing is I give you a kind of situation, but then... Um, you like again no shade but you you give a kind of framing to it that makes it come across differently so you give you add in the factor for example that they're not going to survive and they're going to be like suffering to death in the wilderness so that starts making it seem no kind i didn't of... say i never said in the wilderness uh, okay well sorry you, you you said something kind of like the... they'd actually be better off in the wilderness because the cows can find water <laughs> in the wilderness i'm talking about in a city right Okay, well, it, but either way, core point being that you sort of painted it such that these people are suffering, basically, right? Well, wouldn't they be? Um, well, let's say that they're not, right? Because when you make that modification, it makes it sound like it would be the merciful thing to do to not give them the non-aggression principle, right? So let's just no, say no, no. for what... No, I, look, I, I just said I could understand somebody acting on, on that behavior, but you can't bring in consequences and then deny me consequences. Because if you say, well, 51% of people now have the reasoning capacities of a cow, which is extraordinarily low, right? Then um, then there are consequences that come out of that, right? The consequences to the non-aggression principle, the consequences to, to the, which could be murder and so on. So I'm, I'm like, okay, well, let's look at the consequences of 51% of people having the reason, reasoning capacity of a cow. I really, I've just made, I mean, I love debates, but sometimes it just feels a bit, a bit odd what I have to say. But anyway, <laughs> no, so if we're going to, yeah. if we're going to say, if we're going to say, okay, let's imagine a scenario where 51% of humanity now has the cognitive abilities of a cow. Mm -hmm. What would be the consequences of that? Well, I mean, it's, it's even worse for humanity in a sense than if they just outright die, because if they outright die, if there was some horrible plague that killed 51% of humanity, well, there'd be a lot of burying, but there wouldn't be a lot of feeding, right? There wouldn't be a lot of needing shelter. There wouldn't be a lot of bringing water, right? But if, you know, I don't know if you've ever been around people with extraordinarily low cognitive abilities. I certainly have. And mm -hmm. in that scenario, you need a huge amount, a huge number of resources just to keep people going, right? I mean, they, they, they can't function on their own at the level of a cow, right? They'll, they'll, they'll crap their pants. They won't know how to work a tap. If the tap doesn't work, they won't know how to work a fridge. They're like, they, I mean, it would be a cow, right? Put a cow in a kitchen, how, how well is it gonna do? And so if we're going to have consequences, I'm like, okay, well, let's have consequences. And there's no possibility that all of those people are gonna survive into a ripe and robust old age if that happens in, in society. I mean, we can at least agree on that, right? Because the amount of resources that would be required at a time when resources would be enormously diminished because that would be the majority of the productive human beings in the world had suddenly become not only not productive, which would be the case if they died, but negatively productive in that they, instead of producing resources, they required resources. Well, that would be uh, a situation wherein uh, there would be no possibility for the vast majority of those uh, um, creatures to to survive, to to flourish, to get enough food, to get enough water, given that there would be children who would need to be taken care of. There would be babies of normal functioning who would need to be uh, there would need to be massive resources poured into repairing. Uh, the electrical grid, the the plumbing situation, the water supply, uh, the the food supply. Uh, I mean, it would just be staggering, right? So the idea that there would be no problems for these people outside of the non-aggression principle, uh, I think, would be kind of a fantasy. Now, again, we can create a scenario wherein now that that happens, so now we've taken an impossible scenario and we've said, okay, well, now there are no rational consequences, and then you say, yeah, yeah, I won the argument. It's like, well, okay, <laughs> I guess I could grant that, but I mean it's well it's I, setting up the rules so you win like wherever you move the chess pieces hey look that's how you win chess well no i mean i don't i don't want to do anything dishonest like i don't think that i'm putting any unfair situations to you it's just i'm putting out a hypothetical and then no you are you are because you're putting out impossible situations right and you're saying well the consequences of this would be bad and then when i say well here are the other consequences of this like well you can't have those consequences and I say, well, you know, you never know for well, sure not... if there are cures. Like, no, in this scenario, there's for sure no cures because a demon puts his head out through the dimension and tells you there are no cures. And the demon, right? So there is some stuff you're putting in, and I, I don't mind some of it, but you know, I can't just, I can't just roll over for every scenario that you paint and say, okay, well, I guess 
if you put this constriction in and that constriction in and this omniscient thing in and no consequences here and okay well then you win it's like okay because it's not a respect to the debate because then you've just basically created a video game created the rules and said that you've done physics which you, you haven't well all that i'm trying to do is tease out the conclusion of your moral system right so when i give you a hypothetical but then you take some other factor and put it into the hypothetical like right i haven't specified anything about the kind of condition that they're living in or something like this so when you add that in and then you add it in such that it comes out being merciful to slaughter those people, then of course my response is going to be to adjust that thing out of the hypothetical, right? So if you're well, telling me do that- you think that's, Do you think it's fair to keep adjusting until you win? Um, yes, yeah, to take but, out not, not, but until I win, to, like, until I win to ex hang add on, sorry, something. Just, okay. Let me be more clear about that, sure. sorry, and, and then I'll shut up, right? To, to exclude inevitable consequences from your scenario to the point where you win. I mean, is that is that reasonable? Because there would be natural consequences to 51% of people having the reasoning capacities of a cow. Um, well, look, saying until I win is kind of weird, because I'm not, it's not just about winning to me, like, I just want to find out what we both ultimately think about these kind of situations, right? So I don't like the until you win part, but the No, but I'm telling you what I think about the situation. And you're saying, well, I can't, I can't include that. Right, because so it's not, not interested in what I think about it. You're interested in excluding what I think about it until you win. Not quite. I'm interested in getting what you think about the kind of situation that I'm actually visualizing. So like when you add in something else that I'm not visualizing and then the situation starts looking a bit different, then I just modify it to become more like what I'm actually talking about. Right. So when I do things that aren't part of your scenario, but which would be logical consequences of your scenario, you would like to exclude them. Anyway, look, we're not getting back and we're not getting very far in this particular context so okay i'm willing to you know I'll, I'll i'll toss that aside right let's i'll toss that aside well wait um, but you're and, you're and we'll we'll move on with the debate well, well wait but you're you're kind of treating it like every every alteration i make to deal with um your responses is unfair like my kind of as we go forward like what i will do is just keep um basically modifying the hypothetical if you add in anything that alters it fundamentally from what i'm trying to get at right so yeah, what i really and, and like that's very like, clear what you're saying well, well here if, if i can i, I can kind of counter, if i provide um, a, if i provide a counter argument that goes against what you want to establish you'll dismiss it not quite right it's not just that i'll dismiss it because what you're saying goes against what i've said it's because what you're saying creates a hypothetical situation that isn't quite what i'm picturing Right. So what I want is really well, why, why should it be what you picture? I mean, why don't you just d d give a speech and, and I'll, I'll just listen? Oh, why does it have? To, why does the scenario have to be exactly what you picture? Well, why can't it be us negotiating the consequences of the scenario that you're proposing? Oh, because what I'm curious about is your response to the kind of situation that I'm picturing. Not to no, no, I'm giving you my response. I'm giving you my response and then you dismiss it because it doesn't get you where you want to be. Well, the, the response... It's not a debate, right? <laughs> the, the response involves framing the situation, again, framing, no shade, uh, framing the situation such that it's not really what I'm picturing. So I just I want... I get that. And you don't understand that what you're picturing is not the essence of a debate. Like, why is it that you get to add your scenarios like, well, a demon pops his head out and says there's no cure, which is anti-rational but i don't get to say well the logical consequences of 51 percent of people having the reasoning capacities of a cow would be that enormous numbers of them would die but like well i don't want to talk about that it's like okay so you can have the demon of omniscience but i can't have the inevitable consequences okay well no, no no i don't think i'm telling you that there's anything wrong with what you're doing i think that if you start adding in factors like you know, the people are having a horrible quality of life, I might start leaning in your direction. But that's not really like the kind of situation that I'm trying to get at. I'm trying to get at a situation where those people are still capable of experiencing well-being. There's no like immediate threat to, to their lives or something like this. And they're cognitively identical. And for all you can tell, physically identical to the kind of disabled people who are alive right now. Right, because I don't think, I mean, correct me if I'm wrong, but I don't think that you just value the disabled people who are actually alive right now, like by virtue of belonging to our species or by virtue of being able to reproduce. Like, maybe I'm wrong, but like I see inherent value in those people and I would think that you do too. 
So what I'm doing well, is, I'm, of course, I do. That's why they're covered right. under the non-aggression principle. Right, but I'm trying to get to a situation where we have people who are, for all you can tell, just like those people. Uh, but according to the kind of moral framework you've laid out, there's not going to be that same moral consideration for them. No, but they're, again, we're back to this point too, which is that they're not like current people because current people can be cured, current people can reproduce, and cells can be used to create new ones, which all of which you took away. So I'm fine. Like you can take those away, but then you can't say they're just like. Well, right, because because the, the current people, right? Oh, sorry, you cut out. Um, well, no, I shouldn't say just like. I should say like because what I'm curious is kind of about if you see inherent value in that type of subjective experience, or if it really is that mentally disabled people on your view like just have value by virtue of like belonging to the species or being able to produce people who aren't disabled or something like this which i don't I'm think sorry, that's... I, I really don't know what we're debating here i'm not sure are, are you saying to me do i think that mentally disabled people have value and that their experiences have... of course they do i mean but i'm not sure where i right. thought we were in this abstract okay well, scenario here, me, and now we're talking about what well, do i think of disabled people i'm not sure where we are in the debate at this point Okay, um, well, I can describe where we are. So what I'm doing okay. is I'm trying to just explain to you what I'm trying to do with the argument so you don't perceive it as somehow unfair when I alter the situation. Because all I'm doing is trying to get to the kind of question that I really want answered, which is what um, whether those people, whether that value actually derives from this list of traits you've laid out here or whether you view them as having some kind of inherent value due to their actual quality of experience, right? Which I think it's actually probably the latter. So what I'm doing is I'm trying to abstract out those properties that you're trying to give them value in virtue of and see if you really think they're valueless when those properties are gone or if they still have value. So when I abstract, Wait, so what, can is, I just is, complete, is I just want to complete this one point. Yeah, sorry, go ahead. Yeah. So what I, what I really want to know what is when I abstract those properties out, do they still have value? But if I abstract them out and then you add in some factor or, or spell out some consequence that's going to make it seem like they don't have value, then I want to get that out of there too, because I'm not able to get to the fundamental thing that way. Do you, do you follow what I'm trying to get at there? Well, is, is now the argument dependent upon me evaluating the subjective experience of infertile semi-human 51 percent theoretical entities with the moral reasoning of a cow that that's like if i can the, somehow the, uh, figure out that subjective experience and whether it's, it's into a category called worthwhile which i don't even really understand is is that where the debate hinges because that seems like a really subjective theoretical applied against a very fuzzy standard um, no, so what I'm doing is I'm keeping the, so when you say like, oh, they've been altered so much, well, the things that haven't been altered are they still look exactly like humans, right? And they have a subjective experience that's identical to humans. And I'm trying to find out if you're going to say that they actually don't have value just because we've gotten those traits out of there. Because I think that what I suspect is that you probably see inherent value in that kind of subjective experience, whether these traits are present or not. So, look, we, I mean, we're kind of getting into the meta. We're no, kind of listen, talking listen. about... Uh, the... I'll answer that. I'll answer that because it's, it's a very valid and, and important question, and I'll answer that very directly. I don't know what the percentage of humanity is that has the intellectual capacities of a cow. I don't obviously have that on the tip of my tongue or sure. the, the tip of my nipples or anything like that, right? So let's say it's one in 10,000, right? Okay, so... Let's say that one person in 10,000 has that level of intellectual disability, but they can reproduce it and they're in the category of humanity and there could be a cure and blah, 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 right? Mm -hmm. Now, whether, so, so they're covered by the non-aggression principle. Now, if that changes from one in 10,000 to 5,001, or in your case, 51%, 5,100 people out of, out of 10,000, mm -hmm. that doesn't change the fundamental relationship. That doesn't change the fundamental ethics. Right, they're still covered by, I mean, in, in a rational scenario, right? They're still covered by the non-aggression principle because they're humans, they can reproduce. They are composed of cells from which you can reproduce. There could be a cure, right? So whether it's one in 10,000 or 5,100 in 10,000 doesn't matter with regards to the principle. It can be 9,900 out of 10,000 and there can be 100 people left who have normal human functioning because some horrible disease, some mad cow disease has struck the planet or something like that. So none of the scenarios that you are creating 
produce a situation wherein people who are mentally disabled suddenly don't have value and you can kill them at will. Now, your scenario in which if it's 51%, do we then redefine humanity as now humanity has the moral reasoning of a cow and therefore can be killed and eaten like cows? Well, it doesn't matter because we already agreed that if an illness strikes a species, you don't redefine the species on the grounds of that illness, but it is a deviation from the normal functioning of that species. So to bring it sort of round, none of the scenarios which you are producing result in human hamburgers uh, in, in the arguments that I've been putting forward. Right. So I'm going to, I guess at this point, I'll just go back into the actual argument. I tried to kind of step out to give some context on like what the argument is trying to do just for the sake of like facilitating the discussion, but whatever, we can just go right back to the actual debate. So Look, these these three properties are in place, okay? So they 51% of people lack the ability to engage in abstract moral reasoning. Uh, they're unable to produce. There's no cure for it. Um, and well, and then, their cells aren't human. You can't create new humans from their cells, right? So not just biological reproduction, but even cloning. I don't think I need to give a specific account of why they can't reproduce. We're just going to say in the hypothetical that they're just unable to reproduce, and there's some explanation for that. Okay. Um, okay, cool. Um, now, the thing that you had added in was that uh, they're just going to be like kind of suffering anyway because they can't take care of themselves. So let's just say that the situation is that they're not suffering. So this is how that whole pathway started because you thought that was an unfair move. But, and I was but trying how to... are they not suffering? I, I cannot understand that. How, how is it that 51% of you got three, what, four billion people with the mental capacity of cows and everything's fine? I mean, I don't know. You could, we could come up with any number of things. It's a, it's a wizard keeping them alive. They're preserved by machines. Like it could be anything. It's just a philosophical. It's a wizard. Wait, you're invoking Gandalf at this point in the debate? Sure. There's not a problem does, with doing. Does this not that, trouble yeah. you at all? No, not even. I mean, remotely. it's, it's like I have arguments, and you're standing on, on a, a bridge in Moria. None shall pass. You know, <laughs> come on, Gandalf. Right. Well, it could be something like that. The whole point of the hypothetical is not about what exact conditions are you know bring about that situation it's about the kind of moral evaluation you would make in that type of situation so all like i mean you can you can add in whatever you want it could be robots take care of them it could be the 49 no, percent no no takes no, no, care no. i them. can't add in anything that i want because when i add in rational consequences you don't like them and you bring in gandalf well, what I mean is you can add in whatever you want that accounts for why they're treated well, right? So okay. just just assume that they have a good quality of life. We could like, I mean, if you really want, we can go and ponder up some situations there, but I don't really see why that's necessary. If the conditions are met, that 51% of people can't do the abstract moral reasoning, they can't reproduce, there's no cure, and they're not having a bad quality of life. They're having the same kind of quality of life that a mentally disabled person like this has in this day and age. I'm just right. wondering what evaluation you make in that situation. I make, as I said before, I mean, whether it's one person in 10,000, 5,100 people in 10,000, or 9,900 people in 10,000, doesn't matter. The moral reality remains the same, that the norm is cognitive human functioning, and deviations from the norm are still covered under the non-aggression principle. Okay, so it sounds it sounds like norm must have a weird kind of, like, meaning to you because if like 99 percent of people are a certain way i mean you're not going to say that that's the norm you're going to say the one percent no no no. but we are no we already dealt with this man i don't know why you can't hang on to this it's kind of annoying frankly because we, we've now for the fifth damn time if 99 percent of rabbits are struck with some horrible disease we don't define rabbits as being struck with horrible diseases we say wow that's terrible Okay. And, and they can't, they, I mean, it's a very short scenario anyway in the general 150,000 year journey of humanity because one of the characteristics that you have ascribed is no reproduction. So from day two of this scenario, there are going to be hundreds if not thousands of these creatures dying every day just of old age or, or being hit by a bus or, or getting cancer or choking on uh, a McChicken or something like that. So right, but you're just adding right. So you're, you're, so but, no, hang on. So no, because one of the yeah. standards is no, no reproduction, right? So you can't say this is it's certainly not. Even if we say that they ha have Gandalf producing their food or or Jesus handing out loaves and fishes, within one generation, pretty much the problem is gone anyway, and we're back to 100% of humanity having its cognitive functioning restored. So this is a blip or a dip 
in the human experience. It doesn't fundamentally redefine humanity to be this new thing, which is extraordinarily temporary and is self-limiting because they can't reproduce. Um, so it sounds like for you, the norm doesn't have anything to do with what is actually the way that the majority of humans are, which is what I took the norm to mean. It's, it's about humans uh, kind of like existing as they exist right now with the kind of cognitive, like, even if there's a single human out there who exists, um, in the kind of way you exist right now, that's sufficient to give value to 99% of people who are disabled. Well, disability, by its very definition, is different from abled. It is a deviation from abled. That's why we call it disabled. Okay. Right? I mean, a giraffe that is as tall as me is a dwarf, but I'm taller than the average man. Right? So, I mean, clearly we don't look at a vole and say that vole is retarded because it can't do Euclidean geometry. Right. Or, or it can't tie a shoelace or something like that. Right. So the very definition of there is a deviation from human normality is intellectually disabled, intellectually challenged. The definition of humanity is not ape like hairless ape like bipeds with the mental acuity of a cow. That is not the definition of a human being. If an illness strikes, then that is a deviation, even if there's only one human being left of normal functioning. Now, of course, if there's only one human being left of normal functioning, it doesn't really matter because then nobody can reproduce and the whole species dies out in, uh, you know, 50 or 60 or 80 years or whatever, right? Probably less. So, yeah, no, I mean, the, the, the definition of humanity is not dependent upon 51% of humanity being disabled, right? Okay. So it sounds, well, I, I thought we were talking about the norm of how humanity is. Um, but if we want to say that the trait is actually um, something about, like, I mean, I, I'm kind of a bit lost on how you're defining humanity exactly, but, like, if it helps, let's just say humans just evolve, for whatever reason, into a situation where all of us are like those disabled people. We're not oh suffering, my God. though. Where, where is your capacity to remember what we've just talked about? What did I just it, say, not it, 10 minutes it, ago, it must... about the argument for evolution? The moment you bring in the argument for evolution, you have reproduction back in, which means they're covered by the non-aggression principle. Right. So let's say that they get, um, they evolve such that everyone is disabled and then they all become sterile, right? We can always find a way to work it in. Cause like here, look, Stefan, I'll tell you what's, wait, wait, give me, wait, give me, wait, can, can wait, I have one second? On. Everyone, I, I haven't wait, cut you off on. much. You just I, said everyone. I really have, I, I really haven't follow, cut you off I need off to follow much. your example. Hang I, on. I, I just need to follow your example. I let you when cut you me say off every everyone time. is now, sorry, if everyone is now disabled, do you mean like all human beings now have the cognitive capacities of cows? Yeah. We'll say all human beings are in that state. Because what, what's kind of like frustrating me about the situation is what you're doing is basically trying to like avoid the hypothetical by reshaping it. Like that's been kind of like the whole Wait, debate. you're accusing me of reshaping the hypothetical when you have omniscient demons and wizards? You think <laughs> I'm reshaping the, the hypothetical? Come on. Well, I'm a, or, I, or, you know. Uh, right. I, okay. I, I, I just. No, well, wait, so wait a sec. Wait, come on. Give I'll me a sec. Give you, I, we'll go here. We'll, we'll, we'll go wait. Go no, here. no, that, we'll was, that was that was unfair, so, though. That, wait, that was unfair, though. So. No, it's no, not. I, You're wait, completely wait. redefining the. Every time I give you a counter, a, 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 real, a reality based counter argument to the consequences of your scenario, you just invent magic to erase it. Like well, magical demons that know everything and, and wizards who can feed a majority of, of mentally handicapped people. Right. Because what's happening is I give you the first hypothetical, right? But then you paint the hypothetical such that there is some kind of uh, consequence in it that. Uh, leans in the direction of your moral evaluation, right? So I'm trying to alter it to capture what I'm originally talking about, which is really beings who okay, are... Let, I'm sorry, I'm, I'm getting kind of bored talking about the debate. So let's go to the scenario that you want to go to, which is 100% of human beings have the moral acuity of cows. Sure. Right. Let's, say, let's say that... Okay. Yeah. All right. So there, And keep in mind, so we're talking about everyone is now like the kind of uh, like, right, just like the kind of disabled yeah. person who's actually out there, who's not able to do that moral reasoning beyond what a cow can right. do. Right. So everyone's like that now. Right. Okay. So in that world, do you think it would be fine to just not give these people the non-aggression principle? I'm not sure what you understand. I'm not sure what, what you mean. Well, I mean, would, if, I mean, there's it, no one there. There's no one there with the mental acuity to evaluate 
the ethics of what's going on. I don't. So it's you, like saying, it's like wait, saying I can answer that. I can on. answer that. You're standing. Yeah. yeah. So it's you standing there outside of the hypothetical, making a judgment in about the beings in the hypothetical. So you're not actually in the hypothetical world. You're making an evaluation from outside about if those beings would, under your ethics, have the non-aggression principle. Well, heavens now. Any more than I would blame a lion for murder for eating zebra. No, 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 no. We're not just talking about whether we would blame them for um, aggressing against each other. We're talking about whether you think that if a being uh, who had like sufficient cognitive complexity were there, whether they would uh, have an obligation to extend the NAP to those beings. No, no, I, I'm, I'm, I'm sorry. I'm, I'm not trying to be obtuse here. I genuinely don't ask. The, uh, do you think that I hold beings morally responsible who are completely incapable of processing moral arguments or having moral judgments? In other words, if a cow sits on my car, I, would not, I sue that cow for negligent destruction no, of my I'm, property I'm not talking or about, destruction of my property? I'm not talking about moral responsibility, right? I'm talking about moral value, right? Because there's beings who aren't capable of moral responsibility who we still extend value to. So my question is about whether the beings in that world, in your mind, deserve the non-aggression principle from an agent who is capable of comprehending the non-aggression principle. But there aren't human beings who have the non-aggression principle in this scenario, because all human beings right, you're have observing. the moral capacities of cows. Yeah, you're... Like there's no human being who's not a cow in this scenario. Right. You're observing that situation from outside the hypothetical, and you Am should Am I a still... human being or some other creature? Well, you're just you, Stefan, here talking to me. So like... I am a human being. Yes, but you're not in the hypothetical. You're outside of the hypothetical. And you're looking I'm not in sure what that means. I'm outside the hypothetical. What does that mean? Like I'm it orbiting means, the world, or what? Do you yeah, mean? it means it means you're thinking about the hypothetical. And in this actual hypothetical, there's not Stefan Molyneux, right? So, we're asking about your evaluation about the moral value of those creatures, not their moral responsibility, their value from your place here outside of that hypothetical, whether they deserve. Oh, so why don't you just ask me about cows? I mean, because this is exactly the same as me looking at cows, right? Uh, I would say no, because these beings are, they look exactly like the disabled people who are alive right now, and they are cognitively identical to disabled people who are alive right now. But I don't understand, because if I have no, if I'm outside the scenario, and I have no capacity mm -hmm. to act in the scenario, mm -hmm. I don't understand what any kind of moral evaluation would mean. You're asking about if hypothetically there were some kind of being in that universe who uh, who could think in this abstract moral way, what kind of obligations they would have to those beings? You mean, so if all humanity had the moral capacities of a cow, then they would be indistinguishable from <clears throat> cows from a moral standpoint? <clears throat> um, it depends again on what like what your moral standpoint is actually because that would be true for some moral standpoints and not for others but the question is really just about whether those beings have value on your view Sufici i don't know what the word value means here I, uh, in, in this value in this case is, value is not hang on value is not a I'm, moral term i can give you a definition like in this case we're okay. just talking about sufficient value to merit the nap so what we just talk about if that if it's easier just whether they would deserve the nap on your view. So when you look at that hypothetical world and you see those beings in there, um, I t like, I mean, I'm just assuming, Stefan, tell me if I'm wrong, but in all honesty, I think that you look at that world and you still think these beings have value. Are you, or sorry, you don't like that word. But I think that you would still think that it would be wrong to, for example, make those beings into hamburgers against their will, right? Because again, subjectively identical to disabled people who are alive right now on this planet. They look identical to disabled people who are alive right now on this planet. So the question is just about whether you, looking into that hypothetical, go, those beings deserve the non-aggression principle or they don't. <coughs> but, but there's no human beings to enforce the non-aggression principle. So, for instance, a wolf would hunt one of these creatures through a forest and would eat it. Right, I'm asking... Right, like the, way that they hunt, the way that they would hunt a cow, right? So I'm observing this, and, and do I say, my gosh, those wolves are violating the non-aggression principle? Or maybe... Uh, one of these or a, a band of these creatures comes across um, um, a, a herd of cows, right? And let's say they hit the cows on the head. 
creatures have violated the non-aggression principle because it's cow brain eating cow brain, right? Or let's say one of these creatures falls down a cliff and dies and then uh, cats come and eat it, right? Do I say, well, the cats are, you know, it's terrible what the cats are doing. I mean, we're, we're talking about a situation prior to morality, <coughs> prior to human consciousness, prior to abstract reasoning, prior to philosophy. We're talking about a complete state of nature before human beings. And so you're asking me if I see a Tyrannosaurus Rex eating a Stegosaurus, what is my moral evaluation <coughs> of that situation? I don't even know what the question means. There is no such thing as a moral evaluation of that situation. I'm simply observing, like a biologist would, creatures with no capacity for moral reasoning doing what animals do, which is to try to mate, to try not to be eaten, and to try and get sustenance. Right. So I'm not asking you about whether you think. And that... I'm almost. By the way, I'm almost. I'm almost done with this because I. I just find this line of reasoning to be more and more absurd. And now we're in some Platonic world where <clears throat> I'm. I'm floating in an abstract orbit, looking at human beings with the brains of cows roaming across the landscape. Like it's just becoming too. Well, I mean, I, I like. That's... I like philosophy to be practical, and this is not even close to where I thought this debate was going to go. Which is fine. Um, I mean, you know, but maybe well... I, I should have start, started. But we didn't actually get to anything to do with animal rights and. That's well, kind of this, frustrating this for me because is... hang on, hang on. Sorry, let me, yeah, let me finish talking. Sorry. Let me yeah. finish talking, then then I'll be quiet. Okay. Right, because I was. I mean, I did a lot of preparation <coughs> on on uh, you know uh, whether um, agricultural farming of, of crops uh, displaces more animals and 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 the ethics of it all. And so, you know, I I just you know life for me is is too short to to waste on these increasingly abstract demon orbiting Gandalf scenarios. Uh, I, I actually just generally prefer dealing with practical realities in the world because that's what I think philosophy is about. It's about processing choices that we have to make in the real world and these increasingly abstract, anti-rational, impossible circumstances where all human beings have their skulls removed and, and brains removed and then some alien demon wires in the brain of a cow and releases them back into humanity and there's no consequences for more than half of humanity losing its capacity to have any kind of reasoning and it just becomes so abstract that that's to me and just my perspective right and i'll certainly give you the last word it just feels very disrespectful to philosophy because none of this is going to help people make decisions about how to better treat animals in the real world because it is becoming increasingly obtuse and and manufactured and contradictory and kind of ridiculous. Whoa, and I think that's just a real shame. I think we had a real opportunity to, and and you know part of that's me, right? I could have been more assertive and just say no, no, let's let's start talking about actual animal rights <laughs> in the real world because we do have to make decisions about how to maximize the quality of life of of animals and so on. But uh, yeah, I think it's a bit of a wasted opportunity, and and that's you know on you and and certainly partly on me. Uh, because I could have said uh, no. Let's let's start talking about the real world. Because I, I sort of thought we were going to get to the end of the abstract thing and get, but now it's been what, almost two hours, and uh, we've never got anywhere close to things that happen in the real world that we need to make decisions about. So yeah, it's disappointing for me and, and frustrating for me, and that's going to happen. But uh, yeah, enough for me. That's that's it for me, and I'm going to close off. But I'm certainly happy to give you the last word. Um, okay. All right. Well, I think that there's some unfairness there. So one thing I do want to ask, if you don't want to reply, then I'll just continue. But what is the contradiction? If there's a contradiction, then what's the set of proposition and negation that are involved in any of those hypotheticals? Well, the impossibility of the hypotheticals, right? Because you had to manufacture supernatural elements like wizards and demons in order to make your hypotheticals work, which is why I said in this impossible scenario, which it is. So, yeah, it's right. just wait, we, wait, wait, sorry, you know, sorry, sorry. If, if, if that's you not a contradiction. To, if, you need Gand, if you need the Gandalf principle to win the argument, you need to rethink your argument. Wait one second. We have a basic problem here about just like basic logic. Stuff, no, no, no. So. I'm not. I'm not getting back into the debate because you know this oh, two okay. hours out of my uh, life. Okay. So well, just you, you can have the last word and and then. Okay. Well, well, look, you, you sound frustrated, and my intent isn't to frustrate you, so, you know, <clears throat> no, uh, no harshness, no shade. Um, when you say that there's a contradiction, okay, a contradiction is a set of propositions, P and not P, and I have not seen any evidence that there's a contradiction. So I'll just, if you want to point it out, you're welcome to. If you don't, I can just continue with my closing. No, I, I have, and, and people know what they are, so go ahead. Okay, um, I think that there's some confusion. You, like, you maybe think that like impossible and contradictory are like the same or something. Like, contradiction 
is when you have proposition P and not P. Like, the sky is blue, and it's not the case that the sky is blue. And none of my hypotheticals have involved a contradiction. Um, as for, you know, abstract reasoning, or like the kind of reasoning that I'm engaging in being in some way like useless, like, no, I think that this is how we get to the fundamentals with moral philosophy. I think that it's very important to engage in hypotheticals. And you can find tons of context in philosophy. Like when you're talking about free will, people will give hypotheticals, like if there's just like a, a dark puppet master controlling you, like, would you blame this person? And someone doesn't respond to that by going like, hmm, well, like how would the strings function exactly? And where would this puppet master be located? That's not how you're meant to engage with a hypothetical in philosophy. Um, if there were actually a contradiction in the hypothetical such that you could say the hypothetical is illogical, that would be a basis for taking issue with it. But I don't think that there's anything contradictory. Um, now, with respect to the actual debate, um, I think what's happened is essentially, I've run Name the Trade, I've asked for a stack of traits, we've got species normality on ability to engage in abstract moral reasoning, inability to reproduce, and lack of a cure. Um, I've been putting reductios to Stefan, but he's been um, sort of spitting the reductios back at me in such a way that there is some kind of like negative consequence to them. And all I'm trying to do is just get away from that negative consequence and just get to the situation where we have beings that meet these three criteria, but that are cognitively identical to the disabled people who are alive right now, and who, for all you can tell when you look at them, are physically identical, right? Um, now, with respect to those beings, I'm just not clear if you think they'd have value or not, because we've never really managed to get to the kind of baseline hypothetical situation here. Um, so that's that's about all I have to say. And I appreciate well, you coming well, I'm on I'm going to today. close off, and uh, yeah, thanks for your time. Yeah, thanks thanks to both of you for allowing us to host. It was uh, really interesting. Yeah, thanks also to the Politics Discord. I uh, appreciate you guys. And everybody, you can find their links to their YouTube channels and uh, merch and all that kind of stuff in the announcements of this episode. And also, um, for those of you who don't know, uh, Ask Yourself Discord server is actually one of our VIP partners. You can find li the link to his. And if you think you can do a better job, uh, you'll find him there. Alrighty, it's good uh, talking to you all. Uh, thanks, Stefan. Thanks, Doobie. And uh, have a good day, everybody. Thanks, you too. Okay, I guess now I'll head over to um, head over to Super Chats and just see if there's anything to answer here. Um, okay, this is why species normality argument is crazy from uh, S. Lockshin. Yeah, I agree, it's a weird argument. Um, and just 10 bucks in addition to that. Thank you, I appreciate that. Um, Hammy Whammy says, thanks for everything, Isaac. Um, yep, I am always happy to provide. Uh, and Doobie says, you can join the Discord server, Doobie for 20, thank you Doobie, wow. Uh, you can join the Discord server this debate is happening on by following the link in the description, it's called Politics. Yeah, Doobie uh, puts together a lot of these things. Whoa, another 20, what a crazy guy. Uh, so I do encourage you guys all to go check out the Politics Discord, they have a lot of really good debates there. And um, if you guys have any questions or comments, uh, I mean, look, I'll stay around for, this has been going for an hour and 47 minutes. I'll stay for like five more minutes, and um, if you guys have any questions, just tag my name. I'm just looking at the chat. Any comments, any questions, and uh, you're welcome to uh, get them answered right here. Overall, I thought that that was, you know, it was a decent discussion, but he was very resistant to the hypotheticals, right? <laughs> vegan gains. Stefan is an empiricist, which is why he doesn't like hypotheticals. <laughs> yeah, I think he's making fun of a quote where Stefan says he's an empiricist and that's why he likes white nationalism or something. I don't know. Any questions? Any comments? Just put them in the chat. Beautiful ending statement. It's vegan gains. Stefan will come around eventually. Thanks, uh, Dodging Cacti, for the donations. I appreciate that. And uh, yeah, do I have anything else I want to say about that debate? Um, not really. It's, it's unfortunate. The one move that he made that was kind of frustrating me is I don't like when I put the hypothetical to him and then he puts the hypothetical back to me while adding in some piece of context that I never specified. Like, oh, and all the beings in the hypothetical are like suffering brutally. Uh, and then when I say, okay, well, let's say that's not happening, he says, what? So now you're going to alter the hypothetical? I mean, I think that that's, 
completely unfair. I'd basically call that like kind of hypothetical dodging, although I don't know if he's doing it intentionally or not. Uh, Donald Anderson asks, uh, planning on doing a post-debate analysis. Um, no, I mean, I think it was relatively clear. He gave a three-trait stack. Um, there was a pretty clear reductio, but every time I tried to put the hypothetical to him, he would kind of add factors to the hypothetical, which I just call like hypothetical dodging or hypothetical manipulation. I would adjust the hypothetical to get back to what I was originally trying to get at. And then um, he would uh, get mad, well, not mad, but be frustrated that I would readjust the hypothetical to get rid of the consequence that he added. Uh, Andrew Ardil, oh, I can't say that, Ardilian? Uh, thank you, though. I appreciate the donation. Um, yeah, let's see. What else is there to talk about there? Probably not a whole lot. I mean, that's that's all I really have to say. The general flow was just... Um, I gave him... I asked him to name the trait. Um, he gave the three-trait stack. I gave the reductio. Um, he would add some kind of consequence that I never specified in the reductio. I would philosophy wand that um, consequence away. And then he would be, uh, you know, frustrated with my waving that consequence away and trying to get back to sort of the initial intent of the hypothetical. Uh, Donald Anderson with the five bucks, thank you. Yeah, I, I uh, am happy to provide. I think you're a patron too, if I remember correctly. So, you know, big thanks to you. If you guys like these kind of things, I will plug my Patreon right now. Uh, I'm going to hang around here for two more minutes. So if there's any questions, just uh, just put them in there. Uh, Tristan King, ask yourself, I think you won. Well, I mean, <laughs> yeah, I think that, like, I, I would say so, but, you know, I'm, I'm biased. I am me. I mean, I don't know what basis there would be for thinking Stefan won. I mean, unless you just think that, like, kind of avoiding the hypotheticals constitutes, like, winning. Uh, Advanced Lamb says, don't argue with YouTube grifters anymore. Their whole career is made off dodging back to the center. Um, I just don't know enough about Stefan to talk about the grifter, but look, I'm, I'm happy to engage with anyone who has a sufficient size platform. I think it's good to do these kind of things. Um, <clears throat> the Melonhead Show says, ask yourself, what are your views on abortion? That's just a whole other topic. Let's not do abortion right now. Uh, Slim Shepherd says, so who's up next for a debate? Um, I mean, I don't know. I'm, I'm always here. Uh, Nick says, when's your stream with Corey? We recorded that. I should release that soon. Um, Chairwood, oh, you guys are now, now you're blowing me up when I'm about to go. <laughs> um, Chairwood says, ask yourself as a core element of Stefan's position to value the group over the individual. Um, I, uh, I don't really know. Um, the Melon Edge Show says, what are your views on abortion? Uh, I just told you we're not having an abortion discussion right now. Wait, did I just reread the same thing? Maybe I'm just, no, he did ask it twice. Uh, when's your stream with Corey? It's already been answered. Um, AY, you should make him make the hypothetical with your terms. Um, well, yeah, I mean, that's the general like idea, right? Like when you give someone a hypothetical, um, <laughs> you like you're assuming that they're not going to add some some other factor to it which totally changes its nature right and the proper response to that is just to take that factor out right and then put the hypothetical back to them but that was frustrating stefan uh have you considered writing publishing and ethics no not really um the knowing guy says good job ay another victory for the vegans well thank you uh s auction again with the five bucks seems like you didn't get him as heavily for Seems like you didn't get on him as heavily for using descriptive ethics as other people you've debated. Any reason for this? Um, I don't know. I was just thinking about what's on the table. Like, all I was thinking about was just, he's giving this stack of traits. Here's the reductio on that stack of traits. Then whenever I'd give him the reductio, he would add in some kind of other consequence. Like, oh, and the people are suffering, right? It's like, well, if they're suffering, that's going to change the whole thing, right? Um so then I just, I mean, I'm just repeating myself. Then I just wipe away that um, addition to the hypothetical and then we'd be back to um, the original hypothetical, but that would, you know, kind of frustrate him. Uh, okay, I'm going to get off now, but I'll just read these last few. You guys, now you're blowing me up. I, <laughs> I offered you a few minutes ago. Um, okay, so when does the rationality rules cosmic skeptic discussion? Um, I don't know. I've talked to both of them. We're, uh, we're doing that soon-ish, though. I think RR has just had his stuff going on with the ACA that's probably been, you know, eating into his time. 
Uh, Red Rider says, have a good night, man. Yeah, you too. Thank you. Uh, GA says, why didn't you ask him if torturing animals is acceptable? From my understanding, it should be morally neutral, according to him. Um, it just didn't come into my mind. I was kind of like on my track there. It's me, Papa. I'm sorry. Let me back in. Nope. You dox people. You're gone from my server. Um, Joshy G. Do you object to basing morality on the intended overall consequence of net well-being? So you're basically asking me if I'm like a consequentialist. Um, I'm very friendly to consequentialism, but my system has some level of deontology in it. Um, Zarma says, do you value watermelons? Um, only only instrumentally. Uh, Ruth Ruthless says, he just seems to not understand what a hypothetical is and its purpose. Kept trying to put practical consequences in hypo, basically claiming hypos are useless to dodge them. Yeah, I would essentially agree with that, yeah. Uh, Nepal guy says, thoughts on globalism, just totally other topic. Uh, Magnum opus, I, I'm not interested in questions on totally other topics, guys. Uh, why did you keep letting him say that they can't produce humans when in the hypothetical they could produce humans, but they'd be disabled? Um, if I did that, I guess I just didn't notice, but there's not really like a meaningful difference, like whether they can't produce more humans or whether the only humans they can produce are disabled, that's still gonna fit his uh, his kind of situation that he laid out there, his, his trait stack. So it doesn't matter if they can't produce or if they can only produce disabled. Uh, AIL says, Will you attempt using AVO's coaching strategy sometime instead of debating? Um, well, I mean, I'm kind of a debater. That's sort of what I do. Uh, Mestizo says, I love you, Isaac. Spelt wrong. I, I will accept your wrong spelling of my name just because you uh, gave me $10. So thank you. Hypos are not sci-fi with a heart. <laughs> okay, last ones here. Um, now I'm, I'm getting tired. So uh, Oni says, this debate showed again the fact that you will never properly win an argument in the eyes of the opponent. Um, maybe. Uh, no Heaven says, uh, how did it feel to teabag Steph with hypotheticals? Um, it felt all right. Okay, guys, I'm done. Uh, if you appreciate uh, this kind of content, Patreon, that's uh, what keeps me going. Uh, that is all for today. I hope you enjoyed the debate. Till